All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Crypt13. Today, we're going to look at Kuki Shinobu. I previously just did a video on Yellen, so if you haven't seen that yet, and if you're curious on her kit, what she does, and my analysis and thoughts of it, definitely go check that video out. I will leave it in the description down below or as some kind of card on the screen. Anyway, let's dive into what Kuki Shinobu is all about. Before we start, obviously again, right? This is all first impressions. This is me looking at her kit for the very first time. So I'm not going to get everything or come to a conclusion for every single part of her kit just yet. This is all just initial thoughts and impressions on her. Given time and more, more time to think about it, my opinion can definitely change. However, it does seem like right now at a very high level, this character is an electro healer. Let's just uh, start with her talents and um, her constellations. I don't even know what weapon she holds, guys. Is she a sword user? I have no freaking idea. Let me let me just look. Yeah, okay, so she's, she is a sword user. All right, so just like Yellen, we're gonna start with normal and charge attacks. Gonna move on to her elemental skill, uh, elemental burst. And then passives, passive one, passive two, and then constellations. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today. So normal and charge attacks. Um, first off, it's nothing special. <laughs> so you're probably going to avoid this, okay? Um, this is all physical damage. I don't think her kit specializes in physical damage, so yeah there, there's nothing to talk about here uh it's a sword she's a sword character uh so the scaling is honestly kind of low it looks like right now level eight it's like 83 percent 76 percent 100 and then 130 four hit combo charge attack is a two hit combo nothing nothing crazy let's move on to our elemental skill so elemental skill it will create a grass ring at the cost of her own hp dealing electro damage to nearby opponents okay so so this is going to uh, follow your active character as well and deal electro damage to nearby opponents every 1.5 seconds and restores HP to the active character within the ring's AoE based off of uh, Kuki's max HP. HP consumption from using this skill can only bring her to 20%. Okay, so that's cool. So there is a skill damage. So that means there's an activation damage. So, so costs hp to activate can't go below 20 percent hp heals the active character it follows the active character uh deals electro damage to nearby enemies every what was it 1.5 seconds every 1.5 seconds let me do based off cookies <laughs> cookies I'm, I'm just gonna call her cookie <laughs> cookies max hp so activation damage right now is looking to be about 121% at level 8, which is kind of low. It's nothing too strong. The healing is 5.8%, or sorry, 4.8%. 4.8% plus a, a flat 541. So that's kind of, I don't know, Let's we can quick math this actually. So let's say you build for HP, right? So let's say 35,000 HP. So if that's the case, let's do some math. Where's my calculator? Do I have my calculator up? So let's do 35,000 HP multiplied by 0.48 is 1,680 plus 541. So you're healing about 2K uh, every 1.5 seconds. That's pretty decent healing, I guess. That's pretty good. Looks pretty good. Not bad. Now, deals electro damage to nearby opponents. So this one is 40.4% scaling. It's kind of low. It's kind of low. Uh, the activation cost is 30% HP. So this is like Hu Tao. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be doing a lot of damage. <laughs> uh, what about uptime though? Duration is 12 seconds. Cooldown is 15 seconds. So only three seconds of downtime. I'd say this is a pretty decent, pretty decent. So that means decent electro application, maybe? I don't know. Maybe not, right? Cause it's a 1.5 seconds only uh, and it's only one tick. So maybe not. Internal cooldown. If there's no internal cooldown and you can proc, right? If none and you can proc like overload or something, 
It could be good. It could be a good uh, overload damage build. Very interesting thought. I don't know. That's pretty much it, though. So healing, electro damage, pretty good uptime. Not bad. Move on to our elemental burst. So stabs an evil eviscer ex... I don't know what that word is. So stabs a blade into the ground, creating a field that cleanses the area of all that is foul that deals continuous electro damage to opponents within its AoE based off of Shinobu's max HP. If Shinobu's HP is less than or equal to 50%, the field will last longer. So creates a field that deals continuous AoE electro damage. Single instance damage is 5% of her HP. Okay, so that's that means that's per tick. So per tick, it deals 5.8% max HP. So remember, we did, what, 4.8%, which calculated to around, uh, what was it, 1680? So 5% is a little bit above 1680, but this doesn't account for enemy resistances and damage bonuses, so it's going to be less. So that means per tick... I don't think you're going to be really dealing that much damage. Oh, it even says here what the total damage here. Total damage is 40.4%. This is interesting. They usually don't do this. The total damage is 40.4% or 9.2% max HP. Interesting. Duration is 2 seconds slash 3.5 seconds. What? Okay, so this, this doesn't work how I thought it did. Okay, I thought it was like a continuous field that would deal damage during its entire duration, but its duration is actually super low. Duration is only 2 seconds slash 3 seconds. So what this means is that the, the ticks are super fucking fast. <laughs> right? Right? If the duration is only 2 to 3 seconds, it needs to do that 5.8 within that time frame. Cooldown is 15 seconds. So, okay. Let's let's do a little bit of math here. Uh, let's bring out my calculator. What is 40.4 divided by 50? Oops. 5.8. 6.9? So there's like 7 ticks in 3 seconds, right? Or, sorry, 7, seven ticks in 2 seconds. Right? Something like that. I think that's that's kind of how it's supposed to work. All right, 69.2 divided by 5.8 is 11. I'm gonna call it 12, as a, I'll just round it up. 12 ticks in three seconds? Oh, that's 3.5. Holy moly, man, that's, I don't know, man. <laughs> that's a lot of ticks, 12 ticks. I, I don't know how the internal cooldown is gonna work for that, Then That's interesting. By the way, like the field lasts longer if Fuki's HP is below 50% upon activation. So it's kind of like Hu Tao's, kind of like Hu Tao's passive, right? That gives her 33% more pyro damage if she activates her E skill, I think. Or no, sorry, not when you activate, just as long as she's below 50%, then, then she gets that hydro, or not hydro, <laughs> pyro damage bonus. Energy cost is only 60. Wow. Wow, a 60 cost burst? Bravo. Oh, yo, verse. You're not afraid of non-80 cost burst. <laughs> that's... That's kind of... That's kind of it. I don't think there's anything else. This doesn't heal. This is purely for damage. Is it really gonna deal that much damage, though? That's interesting to think about. So, passive one. Oh god, this this already looks terrible passive. When Shinobu's HP is not higher than 50%, her healing bonus is increased by 15%. What the fuck does that mean? Oh, it's such a weird wording. <laughs> when Kuki's HP is not higher than 50%. Now, okay, I need to I need to think about what the hell this means. So not higher than 50 50%. So that means below 50%. Why did they just why didn't they just say below? <laughs> I think, right? Am I am I am I crazy? When Shinobu's HP is not higher than 50%, healing bonus is increased by 15%. Yeah, pretty sure that's right. God, the wording on this is so bad. Then uh, da, 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 HP or not HP, healing bonus. This is probably the only place where you want to build <laughs> healing bonus because healing bonus doesn't give her any extra damage bonus. The Kuki's HP is below 50%, healing bonus increased by 50%. So this is this is not a damaging passive because nothing in her kit increases uh, damage based off of healing bonus. So this is purely just to increase her healing damage numbers. Um, 
And she was already healing for 2k every tick at 35,000 HP. That's not bad, I guess. That's pretty good. Huh, interesting. Okay. Sanctifying Ring's ability will be boosted based on a Shinobu's elemental mastery. Sanctifying Ring is her E skill. E skill gets boosted based on EM. Interesting. Okay, so you want to build this character for HP and elemental mastery. Okay, now we got some interesting builds here. Now that this character is more than just HP. Healing amount increased by 75% of EM. Okay, interesting. Damage dealt increased by 25% of EM. This is interesting. I wonder what kind of damage bonus this is. Or is this a flat damage bonus? I have no idea what this is. If anyone has an idea on what this, what type of damage bonus this is, like flat, true, scaling, let me know down in the comments, definitely. But yeah, okay, so this is interesting. What this means is we build or EM main stat? Huh? Or subset? Or weapon? Uh, or artifact? Right? Wanderer's troop. Two piece. Or, uh, what is it? Instructor. Potential. That's what comes to mind right now. Build for EM main stat? Probably not. Subset, probably. You'll probably want to focus on HP and then have EM be kind of like the secondary focus. Because, right, this is just like a percentage. So, yeah, think of that as more of a bonus and then focus more on HP. So that's because that's where the true scaling comes from. So focus on HP and then get your EM substats from other things like weapons and artifacts. That seems to be how you'll probably want to probably how you want to build this character. Yeah, okay, so that's Shinobu. That's a very it's very interesting. Her elemental burst is very intriguing with that really low duration. I'm really curious how that's gonna work. Okay, how about constellations now? Okay, C1. Let's start with C1. This one is a boost to her elemental burst. Burst AoE increased by 50%. Eh, kind of a kind of lame, I'm not gonna lie. Uh C2, uh E skill duration increased by three seconds. Okay, so that means this is now a hundred percent uptime, I believe. So duration is 12 seconds before, 15 seconds cooldown. Yep, so this brings us to brings us to full uptime. C3 is a E skill talent level increase. C4, we got when normal charge or plunging attacks of the character affected by shinobu's e skill hit opponents a thunder grass mark will land on the opponent's position and deal aoe electro damage based off of 9.7 of shinobu's max hp this effect can occur every five seconds <laughs> not gonna lie that kind of it's kind of like a really worse just terrible version of Fischl's abilities right the thundering retribution i don't know what it's called let me let me go look but honestly just like a way worse version of this because Fischl procs so often. Where is she? Where is Fischl? If your current character activates uh, an electro related... Um, yeah, okay, yeah, right? See, like, there's no time cooldown on this at all. And then, I think, where's her constellations? Um, I know one of these has it. Is it C6? Yeah, okay. Oz performs joint attacks with your active character, dealing 30% of attack as electro damage. And joint attacks, right? This is literally anything. It doesn't have to be a normal attack, it doesn't have to be an e-skill, it doesn't have to be an elemental burst. It's literally everything. So, <laughs> yeah, this C4 is just kind of like a strictly worse version of <laughs> Fischl's constellations and abilities, which is uh, pretty unfortunate. They gave it such a long cooldown. Every five seconds, what the heck? It will deal... Is this even AoE? It is, okay. At least it's AoE. It will deal AoE electro damage based off 9.7% of his HP once every five seconds, which is super damn long, unfortunate. But I mean, at least you have full uptime now at C4. So as long as it's active, you get three procs, right? Three procs per E skill, but you, you do theoretically have 100% uptime if you pop it off of cooldown. Hit enemies while E skill is active it will deal AoE electro damage. Yeah, this isn't really going to help with like electro application at all. In fact, this is probably going to be the trigger of of elements because it takes so long to to come down, right? But right, her E skill also ticks though. So how long does it tick? 1.5 seconds um, and it's only one tick. So yeah, we don't really know how her electro application is going to be. But I'll, I'll say could be good candidate 
for electro related reactions like decent like decent at the very least yep okay so that's kind of her c4 i don't know what else we can gather from this so let's move on to c5 c5 is elemental burst talent level increase uh c6 is when um kuki takes lethal damage this instance of damage will not take her down this effect will automatically trigger when her hp reaches one and will trigger once every minute when Shinobu's HP drops below 25, 25%, she will gain 150 elemental mastery for 15 seconds. This effect will trigger once every 60 seconds. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, I don't like this C6 like at all because it requires you to take lethal damage, at least for the for, for the first part. The other one is when her HP drops below 25%, she will gain 150 elemental mastery. Okay, I guess I guess that's not bad. So okay, so she's got she's got two things. So number one she will not die once occurs every 60 seconds if if she takes let's 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 word it like that and then number two um is when when below 25 percent gains 150 em oh nice that helps her passive and this is also every 60 seconds so i don't like how long <laughs> like the cooldown on this is the cooldown sucks right the cooldown is too long for a C6. It's way too long. And it only lasts 15 seconds, right? So it's not that amazing. 15 seconds is like one E skill duration. Or like yeah, it's it's literally one E skill duration. So kind of unfortunate. And then it's got a 45 second cooldown, or like downtime. Kind of meh. 150 elemental mastery though is kind of nice. If your damage dealt, depending on what type of damage damage bonus she gets, 150 elemental mastery could be pretty good for damage, um, as well as increasing her healing. But I don't know what the damage bonus type is. Synergizes with passive ability. We don't know what type of damage bonus she gets, though. But yeah, that could be a pretty good increase in damage. Her electro application seems kind of meh so far right now, but we'll, we'll, we'll kind of see. Uh, just because of internal cooldown and it's every 1.5 seconds but right if the aura on her abilities is really high for some reason then pretty good electro applicator uh, otherwise right my other thought was that she could be a good overload rocker so you could consider right she she could be like <laughs> like a a secret like overload like queen and she can heal uh and she's got like elemental mastery she could be a really good instructor uh carrier where she gives elemental mastery using the instructor four piece let me look at the instructor four piece ability again yeah oh it's 120 120 every eight seconds All right so she could be a, a good a good user for this she does have to be the trigger though right she has to be the trigger character also this doesn't work when you're off field so she does have to be on field in order to in order to do this but still she could be a pretty decent um, character for instructor set. And she benefits from all that elemental mastery, which increases her damage. So yeah, I hope that you have some uh, HP. <laughs> some HP instructor artifacts, potentially? And since she's going overload for her main damage output, I would just build freaking, I don't know, full on HP maybe? She can crit though, so maybe electro damage and crit? Ah, uh, kind of hard to say. Electro damage and crit or full HP. I don't know. I, I, I think that if you're going for the overload kind of play style and you want her to be kind of where you want her damage to be strictly from overload and then you also want her to provide pretty good healing, I would just go max HP and then focus on elemental mastery substats. Kind of what I would do and, and go with this so that you can also provide elemental mastery, elemental mastery to teammates uh, and increase more uh, elemental reaction damage. That seems like a pretty decent build to me. So that's interesting. At first, I thought this character was going to be like really, really bad. But after looking at everything, I think she might have like a spot depending on how all of this kind of boils down and comes together. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll definitely see. If she's a really good overload candidate, then I think she might be like a secret, secret good character, like a pretty good secret healer, like a, a damaged healer as well as a, as, as well as a healer. Um, so very interesting in my opinion to think about but anyway that's 
all that I have for this kooky abilities first look. Definitely leave some comments down below on anything that I missed because I'm pretty sure I missed plenty. So definitely drop a comment down below. Let me know what other things we can do with this character. Are you guys going to be pulling for her? Does she look interesting to you guys? I got plenty more videos, so definitely subscribe to the channel if you're interested in that. Don't forget to hit the like button if you thought this video was helpful. And um, until next time, I will see you guys later.